Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the One Shoal Prayer Service. Let me scoot this down just a little bit so I can see you and you can see me. My name is Patrick Aleph, and I'm going to be leading the Shaharit, that is the morning service, and I want to thank everyone who is here today. Um, so we're going to do something a little different today, and, you know, that should come as no surprise to anyone because I'm a huge fan of always doing things a little bit different. I wrote an article uh, probably six months ago about how the um, Siddur, the prayer book, which I have two versions here. This is the one that we're going to use today. It's the One Shul Community Siddur. And then in addition to that, I have this one right here. This is the Koran Siddur. This is the one that was written by uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Uh, who is the chief rabbi in uh, Britain. These books are not the Torah. And here's what I mean by that. If you open a Siddur, and we'll take this one because this is a, a fairly traditional, this is a modern Orthodox uh, Siddur. You open it up, and you start to go through it, and you find things like, uh, here's a Shaharit uh, prayer. Uh, the following poem on this page and in the next... Uh, are from the Middle Ages, okay? So the Torah wasn't written in the Middle Ages, but this is something that's been included in there. Uh, you know, what else have we got in here? We've got uh, a few things from different portions of the Torah. We have some readings from Deuteronomy, some readings from Leviticus, uh, a little bit of the uh, Isaic tradition um, that have been put in here. And what it reminds me of is a mix CD. It reminds me of a mixtape. When I was uh, a teenager, you would make mix CDs or mixtapes, and you would trade them with your friends, so that you got to know what your friend's music taste was, and you got to learn about new bands. This was sort of before internet file sharing became as big as it is. And uh, that's what this is. This is just a mixtape. It's a mixtape of the Torah and the Talmud and the um, later writings by medieval rabbis. Uh, it's interpreted by someone. So imagine um, taking sort of the primal music that our ancestors thousands of years ago were doing, drums. The drum is the first real instrument that human humanity had. Imagine taking that drum beat. You take that. And then you build some songs out of it. So all of a sudden you have rock and roll, techno, R&B, jazz. That's all just built on this. Then you take all that music and you put it on a CD. Then on top of that, you take all of those songs, crunch them together into one big song, and then reinterpret it. That's what a Siddur is. It's a reinterpretation of a mixtape of music that has existed before. Only instead of music, it's prayer. So don't let yourself get hung up on this stuff. Um, I know that uh, the conservative movement recently came out with a new Siddur. We obviously have our Siddur here. This is just whose mixtape do you want to listen to? That's all it is. Don't let this stuff trap you. It's very, very important to remember that it's not what you're listening to, it's the fact that you're listening. And it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it and why you're saying it. So very important to think about that. Now, in that spirit, what I wanted to do with this morning's Shaharit service is I wanted to offer a, a spiritual mixtape. I wanted to offer music, and especially music videos, that I felt really, uh, for me, exemplified what the blessings were about. Now, this is, sounds like a really grandiose thing that all we're going to do for services today is watch music videos, but that's actually not the case. There's only a few videos that I have uh, on my computer that really exemplify that for me. Um, so what we will do is we'll kind of mix it up. We'll do a little of this, we'll do some music videos, we'll talk a little bit, and that will be our Shahari service. Uh, now before we begin any of that, we're going to do help if I actually turn to the Shahari page. Um, we are going to do to fill in, and I'm going to offer a shorter blessing for to fill in. Let 
going to show you how this works. Because we have people who ask all the time how tefillin works. Um, one question I get asked a lot is why does tefillin cost $300? And the answer is because they can charge it. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. It's very expensive to make tefillin. Uh, in particular, kosher tefillin from Israel. Um, that's a political issue because you have tariffs and you have taxes and duties and all of that that increase the price of things. So that's part of why, you know, if you're shipping anything from anywhere outside of the United States or Canada or wherever, you have to pay a lot for it. But um, that's reason number one. Reason number two is that these boxes right here are made out of leather. They look like wood, but they're actually leather. It has to come from a kosher animal. It doesn't have blemishes. You have to have a, a scribe write the sefer, the little um, cloth, the little um, parchment inside there. And so you have to deal with the kosher scroll and making sure that that's kosher. Uh, you know, it has to be made in a certain way and at certain times. That all adds up. The more work you put into something, the more expensive it's going to become. There are resources for inexpensive to fill in, and hopefully in the future I'll be able to post those. Uh, for right now, I don't really have them, but um, we're working on, we being Punctora and One Shill, are working on a way to get to fill in to more people who want them. So that's something we've got going on in the future. But anyway, arm to fill in. Pick your weakest arm, and the idea being that you're creating balance between your work arm the arm that you use to do everything with. Traditionally, that was the right arm. Um, in the pre-modern world, you did everything with the right hand. And it just so happens that I am right-handed. You want to kind of get it nice and tight. And then, depending on how loose it is, you might want to kind of take this strap and wrap it around the box itself a little bit, just to hold it in place. I have to do that with this one. Um, because the straps are really thin, so it kind of helps to hold it in place. Okay, so then we're going to say a blessing that we're going to say for all of this, which is Baruch Atah Adonai Elohinu Melch HaOlam Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvotav Lechiniach Tefillin. And then we wrap it around the arm seven times. We just hold it in our hand like this if you have the loose part left over. All right. And then for the hand wrap, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But the idea behind it is that you wrapping by wrapping the middle finger, you are committing yourself in marriage, in covenant with God, with Hashem. Um, there's also um, wrapping just around the middle of the hand. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But what I like to do is a basic meditation where I look at my palm and I take this extra um, strap that I have and I just start the process of wrapping. And what I do is I don't focus so much on the wrap, but I look at my wedding ring and I try to draw a comparison in my mind to my earthly marriage to my wife and this spiritual marriage, this spiritual covenant, friendship, relationship that I have with God. And I try to imagine the two as working together. Um, my physical relationship with my wife, physical meaning, physical here on earth, marriage with my wife as a reflection of my relationship to God and then my reflection to God as being a um, as being my relationship with my wife. So it can work in two different ways. So what I like to do is just do the wrap and think about that while I wrap. And then whatever is left over, you just kind of wrap it under. Just like in music, there's no right or wrong way to do it. There you go. So now, um, what I'd like to do is 
go on to page nine, which is a, um, normally we would do a psalm right here, and I'm going to just say this little blessing right here that I like, which is, Baruch Ata Adonai Haboer Be'amo Yisrael Be'Shalom. I am thankful to you, our Holy One, who has planted holiness in creation and all of humanity. I pray that you will help me this day to see this holiness in my brother and sister. And now we will normally read a psalm during this part. Now, a psalm sounds like something, psalm, song. It's a song. It's a poem. It's lyrics. So I figured this is a really great place to start with our uh, musical part. So I'm going to give you a little musical taste here of something that I like, and this will be the psalm that I am picking. And let's see if I can find it here. This is a song by Delion, who is does sort of Sephardic indie rock uh, on J-Dub Records, and uh, this is a song called La Serena. <laughs> that's a, a very interesting sort of ending because in a, a weird sort of way um, the next part that we would actually move on to is the Mourner's Kaddish. So what's interesting about Mourner's Kaddish is that it's not about death. 
Um, there's no mention of death in the Mourner's Kaddish at all. So you're led to wonder, you know, why a Mourner's Kaddish? What does it actually mean? Or I didn't really understand it until recently. Um, when we do in one shul the Mourner's Kaddish, we actually use a poem that was written by uh, our friend Ketsira, who is a member of the Kohenet Priestess uh, movement, the Earth-based Judaism with a feminist perspective. Um, and we do a, something called A Prayer for the Living, which is uh, written from the dead person's perspective. Um, now what's interesting, I started kind of thinking about it, um, that that's really what the poem is. We're actually intoning the words that the uh, departed person would say if they had an opportunity. If you could speak something from beyond this earth about your situation and where you are, this is what you would say. Uh, I'm actually going to do a different one today. Uh, what I'm going to do is a Mourner's Kaddish. This is written uh, in, this is a translation of the traditional Orthodox blessing. I'm going to say it in English, though. Um, typically, at this time, we would say the name of someone that we are mourning. Uh, also, if you know someone who is mourning, you can say Mourner's Kaddish on their behalf, and it will be as if they said it. Uh, the idea being that we create community when we share tragedy. Uh, as much as sharing joy is more fun, sharing tragedy is important. It allows us to, to connect to each other, to feel a sense of belonging with one another and togetherness. So if you know someone who is Jewish or not uh, and is mourning the loss of a loved one, uh, if you would like to say the name of that loved one or you can keep them in their heart, in your heart, you can post it here in the chat room below if you happen to be praying with us live today. Just say the name of the person who has passed on. Um, Hebrew name, if you like. English name, if you like. Whatever you're into. Take a moment to let anyone do that who uh, may wish to do so. And then we will, um, we will do this Mourner's Cottage here. Magnified and sanctified may his great name be in the world he created by his will. May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and in your days, and in the lifetime of the house of Israel, swiftly and soon, and say Amen. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, raised and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One, blessed is he, beyond any blessing, song, praise, and consolation uttered in the world, and say Amen. May there be peace from heaven and life for us and all of Israel, and say Amen. May he who makes peace in the high places make peace for all of us in Israel, and say Amen. So, that is the Mourner's Kaddish. Now we can move on back to the One Shul Siddur. And we will say a Rabbi's Kaddish. This is on page 10. May your name be great and holy in the world which you have made in your way. May the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, be over you in your life and in the lifetime of your people. May Adonai be blessed forever. The greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, is beyond all words. Blessed is Adonai. For those who choose to be chosen, for students and teachers of Torah, here or anywhere, may we all have blessings, and may we all have peace and life. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting is the use of pronouns um, in religious perspectives. Now, here at One Shul, we are an egalitarian, inclusive, uh, diverse uh, group. We all come at things from different perspectives, uh, and there's a lot of debate that exists in the Jewish world in uh, all different circles about the use of the word he for God. Personally, I tend to omit that. Um, not because I think that uh, using he is necessarily the worst thing in the world, uh, but I think that it degrades God to put a pronoun to describe God, because God isn't a person. You can't use he or she. 
with God, because God is. God is he, God is she, God is it, us, we, they, all of the pronouns in the world, uh, all of the pronouns that have yet to be written here and zir and, you know, all of the um, transgender pronouns that happen to be coming out now as we learn more about uh, the trans community. Uh, lots of, you know, different adjectives to describe a person. Uh, God can have those attributed to. And at the same time, God is not us, and we are not God. So it's very important to really think about that. So why would you use he or she or one of these terms for God? And I think that there's a very simple reason. If you spent your entire life thinking only abstract thoughts, and I've known a few people who are like this, it would be like taking really bad acid. You would basically just lose it. Your, your mind would be so open all the time that your brains would fall out. And I've met people like this before who are philosophy students and religious studies students and people who spend lots of time really deeply in Kabbalah and, and all of that. And I do believe that the transcendental is very important. Obviously, I'm here uh, showing uh, that that is important to me. However, I think it's very important that you be re uh, rooted in some sense of what reality is. It's very interesting, given how different human beings are one to the next, that we can even agree on what reality actually is. Uh, it's it's kind of weird. What saying a word like he for God is, or rapping to fill in, or any of these other things, is that it takes the abstract and it simplifies it for us. Now, should we be simplifying God? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that it's very hard to worship the abstract. It's very hard to feel the presence of God when you put up so much politics in front of it. So be comfortable saying he. Be comfortable saying she. Be comfortable saying whatever. Because those titles are really meaningless anyway. And be comfortable with the fact that God is so abstract that we can't put our politics onto God. All we can hope is that we worship God in a way that is genuine. This is genuine for me, and I hope it's genuine for you. And if it's not, tell me, because I'd like to know, so that we can make ourselves as a community better and better. All right, I'm going to get ready for the Shema. Uh, before we do the Shema, uh, I'm going to do another little musical video here. Let me just pull this up real quick. This is uh, another band from J-Dub Records. It's actually a DJ group called Solico. They are an Israeli hip-hop group. Uh, play a little bit of that, get ourselves in the spirit of the Shema. Uh, the reason why I think doing hip-hop uh, and DJ music before the Shema works is that uh, hip-hop uses a lot of sampling. It uses a lot of um, different kinds of vocals, different kinds of beats, different kinds of influences all mixed together. And if you read in our uh, One Shul Community Siddur, it talks in here about uh, the splendor of radiance. And later on, after the Shema is done, we move on to the Amidah. Think of what light is and what sunlight is. We start with the blessing before the Shema, which is this kind of big light, this big ball in the sky of heat and energy. And that comes down to us. And the Shema is the recognition of feeling that heat. Then we move on to the Amidah, which is taking that light energy, channeling it into ourselves, and then sending it back out. So I like this idea with uh, Silico that we are taking in all of this energy. And in the same way hip-hop works, by taking in lots of different kinds of energies from different places. So let's use this as a vehicle for bringing in our own energy, and then we'll say the Shema together. Now we got our man, Lyrics Ball from the Bay Area. Sing it with us. 
Yes. So put them up. That's also from our debut album, Exotic on the Speaker. Check. Oh, oh, oh. to the central prayer in Judaism, the Shema. The way I'm going to do it today is a call and response Shema, so I will say part of the Shema, and it will eventually build up into the full Shema. Shema, Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael Adonai. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad we bless the glory of creation, remembering that all nature is the garment of Hashem. We do so silently in awe. Baruch Shem Kavod, Malchus Hole, Olam Va'ed. And now we move on to the Amida. And the Amida, if you read this meditation on the Amida, we're taking that light that comes from the Shema, and we're moving it through the prism. We're... We have light from everywhere that comes into us and it becomes one, and then we push that light outward and then it refracts again. And it breaks into all of the different uh, colors of our soul. <clears throat> I am grateful to you, protector of all, our God and God of our ancestors. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Yacho, Elohe Leah, Elohe Rachel. Adon Alam, who created goodness, who inspires us to repair the world in compassion, King, Queen, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, Shield of the Patriarchs, Shield of the Matriarchs, and of us all. Adon Alam, give us knowledge. After giving us knowledge, accept our repentance. After accepting our repentance, forgive our shortcomings. After forgiving our shortcomings, redeem us, heal us, bless our lives, and bring us together. After bringing us together, judge us fairly, defeat the evil in us, strengthen our inclination to do good, and now that we are holy before you, make the earth heavenly for us, hear our prayers, and make us worthy of your goodness. Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh, Baruch atah Adonai, oseh ha'shalom, Baruch atah Adonai, shemei tefillah, blessed are you, Lord our God, the holy God, blessed are you, Lord our God, who makes peace, Blessed are you, Lord our God, who hears our prayers. And now the Elenu. It is the duty of those who choose to be chosen to proclaim your greatness. So we bow in worship and thanksgiving for the, for the responsibility you have given us to bring the message of your oneness to the world. Know therefore this day and take to heart that God alone is God in heaven above and earth below. There is no other. Melech HaMelechim. We long for the time when the world will realize perfection through your will and the work of our hands. And on that day, the world will embrace this oneness, and they will declare, Adonai is our God. Uh, a few <clears throat> short announcements before we move on with the rest of our day. Um, let me see if I can find... Uh, okay, here we go. Um, we are going to start in a few weeks doing an online Torah study class. Uh, we already have a program called Torah Together where we partner you up 
with another person to learn Torah. Unfortunately, it seems like people aren't able to quite make time or, you know, sometimes you get a little disorganized when you have to figure out your schedule yourself. So sometimes it helps to have a little bit of structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this Torah Together class. And instead of having a Thursday morning shahari like we have now, we'll have a uh, Thursday either morning or evening um, Torah study, Bible study. So uh, we need to figure out, we all need to talk as a community about whether we want morning or evening. Um, I am leaning towards evening because I think more people would be able to attend because of work. I know some people work in the evening, so it's going to be a little bit of a delicate balance. Um, but I'd like to hear back from you about what you would like. Uh, how you'd like it to be structured, how you'd like us to talk. Um, obviously, we're not just going to read the Torah portion to you. Uh, you know, we're going we're to talk about it, we're going to discuss it, we're going to debate it, because that's what we do as a community. Uh, but every week, if you're not familiar with how uh, Torah study works, every week a new parsha, a new portion of the Torah is read, and it's read sequentially. And every week we can send you an email, uh, it'll come out in our general newsletter, uh, with that week's store portion, you can read it in advance, or come even if you haven't read it. We'll talk about it, Michael and I will do it together. Um, if we have special guests who happen to be in the area who want to discuss it, we can do that. Uh, if anyone here would be interested in leading um, a discussion on their favorite Torah portion, we can go on ahead and sign you up for that, and you can be the service leader for that, the class leader, I should say. Um, so we can do that as well. But what we'll do is we'll go through the entire uh, Torah together. So that'll be a really great opportunity. So uh, there is a resource for this online. If you go on the One Shul website and go to the Indie Yeshiva, uh, there is a link for online um, uh, JPS uh, Hebrew English Tanakh. So you can just go there, find the Torah portion for that week, and you're all set. You can just read it right off your computer. It's right on the One Shul website in the Indie Yeshiva, our online library. Uh, if you want, you can also buy a copy. I kind of like having a physical one to read sometimes. Um, this is the JPS, Jewish Publication Society, uh, version. There is no right or wrong with it. Uh, this just happens to be the one I own. I do know that they are having a sale right now, so if you did want to get one, I think it's 40% off. Um, you would have... Uh, that opportunity as well. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think that there really is any difference between the different editions that they've done. I think it's really just the cover that's different. Uh, there may be some slight variations, but for the most part, you know, if you got this, you know, you're all set. But you can do this or you can read it online um, if it's too much of a financial hardship to buy it. Uh, so take that. We'll read it every week together. I think that's going to start in about two weeks, uh, so that'll be coming up. Uh, in addition to that, Michael and I are going to be in Chicago uh, next week for uh, some punctorial work. We have a corporate meeting with the board of directors who are based out of Chicago, and we have to talk to them about what we're up to and uh, figure out what our next few steps as a community are going to be. So this is a really great opportunity. If you have ideas for things that you'd like Punk Torah or One Shul or New Kosher to do, um, if you have ideas for new websites, new outreach, anything like that, uh, let me know. Send us an email, punktorah at gmail.com, or come to services and mention it. Um, we can't do things unless you tell us what to do. Uh, I'm not the boss of One Shul. I'm not the boss of Punk Torah. You are the boss. You are the one that gets to decide whether or not all of these projects are successful. By coming, participating, letting your friends know, letting your family know, um, blogging about it, sharing all of what we do on social media, that's how we are successful. And without your feedback, we can't do anything. So I want to know when we do it right. I want to know when you're happy. I also want to know when we do it wrong. I want criticism. Um, without criticism, we can't grow. So it's very important to me that you know that this is your community. This is not the Patrick TV show, and the Michael TV show. This is your community. This is your synagogue. And you own it. It's your right to have it. So, very important. If you believe that, if you believe this is your community and this is your synagogue, then step up and let us know what we need to do as a community to get better and better. So, 
please send me that info before Sunday, because Sunday is when I'm going to be driving from Atlanta to Chicago. <laughs> um, and if you happen to live in the Chicago area, we really won't have a lot of free time, unfortunately, but if you happen to be up in that area or know someone who is, let them know. Maybe we can schedule some time to hang out, do a podcast, something like that. Uh, what else have we got going on? I think that's our biggest stuff. Um, lots of new stuff going on at New Kosher. We've got uh, three new bloggers that are working there, Chef Emily, uh, Young Broken Kosher, and Edible Torah. So check all of those out. We also have on the New Kosher website a Food Devar Torah. It's a teaching on the Torah uh, based around the idea of potlucks. So if you go on uh, the uh, New Kosher website, scroll down to the bottom, it'll say Potluck Devar, and it will have a food-related message to this week's Torah portion, and that's brought to us by our friend Leon, who runs Edible Torah. So, um, we've got that. I think that's everything. Um, check the newsletter. All kinds of great stuff in there. I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow, Friday, at 2 p.m. I'm going to be leading services before we go into our secular new year. And last but not least, we need a sponsor for Punctura for next week. It's $18 to sponsor the website for one week. Uh, you can sponsor one show, Punctura, New Kosher, whatever you like. Um, and it helps keep our websites going. And it helps keep things free. Um, I hate for the day to happen where we have to start charging to do stuff like this. So, if you can please help, we'd really appreciate it. And you know what, if you don't have 18 bucks, 5 bucks. What's a cup of coffee? Anyway, thanks a lot for coming to services. I'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Lunchel.